Hi everybody, how's it going? Um, so as the last video ended off and as I stated on that video um, I was going to do a top five least favourite Patrick Chatton episodes. Um, again I did this for Mr Hartnell so um, again I promised that I would kind of, months and months ago I promised I would kind of do one of these um, for Mr Chowton. And again, this is kind of really the first chance I've had to bloody sit down and do anything like this, to be honest. Um, if I'm not watching a, an episode or a part, I'm rendering, I'm editing, I'm working, I'm asleep or I'm eating. So this is kind of me getting down to the point where um, I'm kind of about to do this. Um, I'll probably do Pertwee ones after I've done these because um, I'm now watching Tom Baker. So the Pertwee ones, I can do them for as well. They may not be out today, um, but I will kind of get them recorded, um, if not today, possibly tomorrow, um, just so that they're ready to kind of go out once Pertwee is all uploaded and available on YouTube. Now, um, you guys on Patreon will get it before YouTube gets it, but as soon as YouTube's had the full run of Pertwee up as well, um, I'm currently in the middle of editing The Green Death, so that should be on Patreon fairly soon i expect um so yeah i'll probably just get on into getting those uploaded once full pet is available on youtube for everybody um but what i'm going to do is i'm going to get on into talking about my least five favorite chat episodes now this was really difficult for me actually to pick five that would go on a list um it could have very easily have been three least favorite episodes but I thought I did five for Hartnell, I'll do five for Chowton. Um, so I'm just going to get straight on into it. Um, and yeah, let's let's just go. So uh, I do apologise. These are my notes for this. Because um, I had some things I needed to kind of write down and get off my chest for a couple of them. Um, so if I do kind of keep looking down, it's just so I can kind of remember where the hell I'm at and what I'm, which episode I'm talking about. So um, number five on the list for me is Fury from the Deep. Now, I really enjoyed the concept of the seaweed in this. I thought that was great. Um, I also liked Oak and Quill. I found those guys to be really, really creepy. Um, Robson, who kind of looked after the place, I found highly irritating. Um, but what it did do is his character helped create tension in this. So that aspect of it, I did really enjoy. And the whole gas coming out the mouse thing was another really creepy thing as well. What really annoyed me about this episode, though, um, overall, was the very fast and quick, sudden decision and departure of Victoria. That pretty much came out of nowhere. And she suddenly was turning around to Jamie and saying, oh, I'm not too sure about this. I'm not too sure about that. And then she just suddenly was like, actually, I'm just going to just gonna stay here in like the future, miles away from the, the time period of brought up in and used to and and that kind of uh, that got to be quite a lot as i said previously there was kind of one hell of a revolving door in terms of companions um over the over a couple of seasons and again vicky's abrupt departure i kind of didn't really or victoria's rather sorry um in case anyone gets confused um I found just so out of the blue and it didn't really fit with the story. I don't know if it was ever intended for her to leave in this or would they expect her to stay longer and did she just kind of turn around and say, look, I'm, I kind of want to go now. Um, that's what spoiled the story for me, to be honest. And it's it's pretty much the reason why it made it onto the list was because of that sudden and, and swift departure. Um, so that yeah, that, that's pretty much the reason why um, it became number five. Um, Fourth on the list, a lot of people might not like this choice, um, but fourth for me was the Highlanders. The reason there was one reason why this story made it onto the list, and one reason alone, um, and that reason was Polly. Now, Polly in this story irritated me beyond what I thought was comprehensible. She already annoyed me as it was, but this episode just for me solidified my dislike for that character. Um, I found her more whiny than normal um and the scenes for me that she had with Kirsty really took away 
a lot from the character of Kirsty because I really enjoyed her character. If she was by herself or maybe paired with someone that wasn't Polly, I, I would have been so happy because I found her to be such a, a good character and some one that could have been fleshed out a lot more. Um, she could have done a lot more in the story. I felt like Polly really held that character back and I really, really didn't didn't appreciate it. Um, the only thing that kind of really saved this episode for me was the introduction of Jamie. Um, and as I say, it was, it was Polly that kind of really made me put this on my list. Um, that scene where they were kind of fell down that kind of little hole. I hated that scene so much. I just wanted to witness Kirsty getting out of there and leaving Polly behind and us never seeing Polly again. That's how I felt in the moment when I was watching it. Um, it was something that unfortunately um, spoiled this, this story for me quite a lot. Um, and as I said, the only thing that kind of saved it was the fact that they kept Jamie on and Jamie stayed. And I'm forever happy that he did, to be honest. Um, it probably wouldn't... It'd probably be a lot higher on the list if not for Jamie, in honesty. So that's the reason why it made it on my list. Uh, the third story to make it on my list was The Space Pirates. Now, I struggled with this one mainly because out of the six episodes, obviously five of them were missing. Um, if it ever got to the stage where they reanimated, or they are even, even just animated, um, I might enjoy it a lot more. Um, I enjoy the character of Milo. I found Milo quite cool. I liked his uh, spaceship. I liked that it was called Liz. Um, Liz 79, I think it was called. Um, and I enjoyed that a lot. I enjoyed that he kind of had like little instruments and things so that he could make his breakfast and how much he was kind of a little bit of a rebel, to be honest. And he kind of just did what the hell he wanted to do and didn't conform to the norms. And I liked that aspect of his character. Um, but the biggest thing for me was the fact that so many episodes were missing I struggled a lot with it um story wise I believe it, it could have been for me personally it probably could have it could have been a four-parter there was there was no reason for this to be a six-parter I think it was a bit fleshed out too much and that also detracted from it slightly there was too much time kind of spent on the beacons for me as well um, I like the concept of part of it kind of drifting away and them having to magnetise it back um, but far too much time was spent kind of on that aspect of, of the story but I did enjoy the twists and turns I enjoyed the fact that that, uh, that lady's uh, dad was actually still alive Milo's kind of partner who kind of um, created that company um, and obviously Milo was then kind of blamed for him being dead and it turns out he wasn't dead, he was just kind of being held in his little library and his daughter didn't know he was actually still alive. Um, and obviously he was a lot older and she was kind of duped as well. That was a good little spin and a little twist on things for me, but again, without all the episodes there, the reason why it's on the list is I, I just struggled um, to get through all those missing parts. Um, same thing happened um, as much as I kind of enjoyed watching Marco Polo when I got to parts like six and seven I was just mentally exhausted um, because I'd watched so many reconstruction stills and this is what kind of made this onto the list for me second on my list is the dominators I struggled with this one quite a lot one of the main reasons why I struggled uh, was the quarks I didn't particularly enjoy those guys very much um, I did enjoy the museum aspect of things when it had all the old weaponry and everything in there as well. Um, but the Dulcans, uh, the Dulcians, I can't really remember how to pronounce it, to be honest. Um, they kind of... I enjoyed the part of... They couldn't, couldn't really understand why the radiation was suddenly nil when they'd expected it to be kind of a place where they couldn't go because of the radiation. Um, and the levels should have been a lot higher than what they were. So that kind of twist on things. I liked, um, I didn't like the slave element in it. I'm just going to point that out. Um, I didn't like the fact that the Dominators kind of made the Dulcians into slaves. Um, to kind of do their bidding and kind of drill the holes. And I also found them to be quite a lacklustre villain, in honesty, the Dominators. Um, I just really struggled with them as a whole. Um, I didn't find them that threatening. Um, 
they didn't really do much they kind of just ordered people about and they just had the quarks as like their little minions that kind of helped out um it didn't really pose much of a threat for me as a villain the quark or the dominator um and the, the dialogue in it was so heavy i struggled um at times with the amount of heavy dialogue in this one as well um which is probably the main reasons why i kind of didn't enjoy it as much as i enjoyed others um which is is again is it's kind of why it made you onto the list um it really failed to grip me as well as a, as a story overall um and i didn't find it that exciting to watch sadly which again is is why it's uh, found its way onto this list now number one on my list um is the crotons the biggest thing that annoyed me in this was the crotons the crotons in a whole are probably one of the silliest villains i've, I've seen in a while um clunky costumes for one um, I expected them to be a lot more threatening than what they were in within the story. Um, I did like elements of this though, but the one thing that did let me down were the crotons themselves. Um, using the acid to kill the crotons for me um, seemed to be a really easy way of getting rid of them, um, killing them. They seemed to be able to get to that really easily and we really quickly. It, it didn't seem to be much of a challenge for them to kind of figure out, you know, we just need to use this acid to, to get rid of them. Um, I think there was only two or three of them as well, which I thought was quite bizarre, um, how they'd managed to, again, enslave the the people living on the planet uh, into doing what they wanted and doing, like, the educational tests and finding the most intelligent and then putting them through that kind of gaseous spray that obviously then killed them because they just drained their mental power because they needed it. Um, again, I just found it difficult to kind of, it, it was, I found it hard to be gripped by this again, um, which was, unfortunately was a shame because to me, this, this story had a lot of potential and a lot of that potential was, was in fact just taken away by the crotons themselves being as they were. Um, I actually felt quite let down as I stated, um, watching this, it could have been, it could have been so much more. But unfortunately, it, it wasn't. Um, as I said at the beginning of this video, um, I did find it slightly difficult to find ones to dislike. Um, and these were the ones that kind of stood out to me the most um, for the reasons stated. Um, so I'll probably do the pastry ones at some point. Um, but those were my top five least favourite Patrick Troughton episodes. So um, feel free to pop yours down below in the comments, um, whether you agree, disagree, um, what you least liked most about the ones that you least liked. Um, it'd be really good to hear your thoughts on, on those um, and on mine as well, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, um, thanks for listening again and I'll see you guys later. So thank you.